So how people typically buy a watch is they will have a certain amount of budget that they can work with, and they're not gonna have that much flexibility beyond that, and they wanna maximize value as much as they can for that amount of money that they have. So with this kind of as context, what I wanted to do and what I've been doing with different price ranges is looking at definitive watches for several categories for a specific price amount. And today we're going to be looking at $1,000. So how this is going to work, if you've never seen these videos before, what we do is we try to pick one to two watches per category of a variety of categories that we're going to look at. I'll also have some honorable mentions where I don't go as, into as much detail, but I still you know, just mention that watch. And of course you can't go over everything here, so don't get mad, there's plenty of great options, but I really wanna focus on things that I think are some no-brainer choices and places of value in the ranges that we're looking at and here for $1,000. And in terms of the categories that we're gonna be looking at here today, and this is going to be dictated slightly by the price that we have for $1,000. First is going to be our everyday watches, then we have Flieger watches, field watches, dress watches, dive, GMTs, and courts. As you might have recognized here, there is no chronographs on this list here today. Reason being, I don't think there's a definitive chronograph for $1,000. I think there's some great stuff as you start to get a little above $1,000. And then also, of course, some affordable things that are available with Siegel and then also some uh, quartz-powered chronographs under $1,000. But it just didn't feel right that there was really that much optionality right at $1,000 for chronographs. So I'm going to omit that from a category here today in this video. Now, before we jump in, definitely check out the new pre-owned selection on teddybaldesser.com. New product coming in every single week. We have some great options. If you're looking for things just north of $1,000, we're getting in new things right in that price range, $1,000, $2,000, and they have some great buys there from brands like Zinn, uh, also looking at brands like Nomos. So definitely check it out. We have new things coming in all the time. Make sure to just keep checking that and see what comes available in stock. Now, first up, we have everyday watches. And how I would describe a perfect everyday watch is at least 100 meters of water resistance can work in both dressy and casual environments and pretty much be that daily wearer that you don't necessarily need anything else in addition to it. So for around $1,000, I think there's two places that I would look. I mean, there's plenty of other watches as well, but these are two standouts. If you're talking about $1,000 and under, First will be the SPB167 from Seiko. This is a member of the Sharp Edge collection. You can also look at some other variations within this collection with different dial colors. These to me are really beautiful looking watches. The dial is unique, it's different. 100 meters of water resistance, 6R35 movement on the inside. Pretty wearable case that's going to have some elegance to it with 39.3, gonna wear slightly larger than that, close to a 40 millimeter case. But still, all things considered, I think you have maximized versatility here with this watch can choose your dial color. I honestly like some of the other dial colors more than even this blue dial one, but that dial is just so entrancing with that triangular pressed type of array of design that I think is just so cool and unique for this price segment. Some people might not like it, but I think this is a very strong standout from Seiko in the price range. From another watch from the everyday category that I think has to be mentioned here, and I actually did a video pairing the 167 versus this watch, and I think that might give an indication of why I think it makes sense to look in this direction, because I think they are two of the definitive just everyday watches in this price segment, and as with Tissot and the Gentleman Powermatic 80. Now, a lot of buzz was coming around the PRX, but if you're starting to just get into, okay, what is an everyday watch? Is the PRX really gonna be maximized for dressy scenarios? I don't think so, nearly to the same degree as the Gentleman. The Gentleman, although maybe sacrificing on elements of the case, as well as the bracelet not being as good as the PRX, it does make up for it in other ways. I think the indices on the dial are just so nicely done, the faceting, and just, feels way more premium. This is just a fantastic watch. And this was released uh, almost, I think it's three years ago now, almost, it's coming on that uh, point in time. This was just absolutely immediately, I'm like, okay, this is going to work, no question about it. 80 hour power reserve, Powermatic 80 movement with a silicium hair spring, moderately sized case that should work on a variety of wrists, 100 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, and maybe some safe looks that some might describe, but still, I think when you're talking about that first watch, maybe you're spending you know, a good amount of money for the first time on a watch, that's kind of what you want. You want something that can walk both sides of the aisle, and the Tissot Gentleman absolutely does that. All right, so now moving on to Flieger watches. And unlike all the other categories, this is the one that I feel is the most uncontested in regards to really there's nowhere else to look in my opinion. I think these are definitively two of the best in the category and one is going to be from Stova with the Flieger Classic. You can choose the case size and Classic 40 is a model that I've reviewed on the channel in the past. It does retail above $1,000 so that is one thing to keep in mind but it's close enough that I think okay 
I, this just makes sense to include here. Uh, I don't think it makes sense to look at anything else. This brand has a ton of history in creating figure watches in World War II and has continued this uh, history in developing watches in the Black Forest in Germany to this day. Also, when you go with the Stoba Flieger Classic, you have some optionality on, hey, do you want the logo? Do you not want the logo? Do you want to go for the hand winding movement versus an automatic movement? So there is some optionality on their site, which is pretty nice to see. I have a full review. It's definitely a dated video compared to uh, what I would say is a good video by today's standards. But still, uh, if you wanted a little bit of a deeper dive in terms of the Flieger Classic, that is certainly one to look at. And then the other one to look at, I think has to be Laco, the other brand that I think are right head and head with Stova. I think you really can't go wrong with either. They both do a fantastic job. I usually say Laco at the affordable end because they do have some entry level options for around $400 uh, for a Flieger style watch. That's why I think they're very compelling in that entry level price range. But once you get to $1,000, then you have to look at the Heidelberg. This is where you start getting into their Swiss made calibers on the inside. This is a type A style dial, wearable case, and also dealing with kind of that no nonsense Flieger style watch that this brand, again, is also famous for having a history of almost 100 years in producing watches, making their watches in Germany. So now for our next category, we have field watches. And for this, I think there are also two brands that really excel in this price range. And I wanted to look at some of the higher end offerings from this first brand, and that is with Hamilton. I think the one here is the Hamilton Khaki Murph. So this is a watch that became famous as it was used in Interstellar and saw some screen time in that movie, very limited screen time, but still very cool to see. This watch made famous the Eureka in Morse code on the second hand, the cathedral style handset, faux loom on the markers that actually, I think in this instance looks pretty solid. I like how it all comes together. It is also known for having a larger case, which you do have to keep in mind. This is not gonna be a field watch for those with smaller wrists. It's gonna wear to the fullest extent of that 42 millimeters with that case size. You're getting 100 meters of water resistance. Movement on the inside is gonna give you an extended power reserve. And I think this is a good watch for two reasons. One, you have the history of Hamilton that's going to back it up, but then also just the cinema connection, which Hamilton has kind of really become famous for their usage in seen, uh, being seen in Men in Black. You had many of the Christopher Nolan movies. Uh, they're really active in this type of pursuit. So this is one that I would say for around $1,000, this one retails just under that a great one to look at. And then for the other option in the field watch category here, we're actually saving some money, getting right around $725. I was kind of conflicted here though. What Seiko Alpinist should you include in this price range? I went back and forth. I mean, I like personally, the Baby Alpinist is probably my favorite. You also have the SPB243, which was kind of a retake on the 1950s style of the Alpinist. But I think if you're talking about what most people think of when they think of Alpinist, they think of the Saab 017. And the modern creation of that is the SPB121. So I have a video looking at this watch versus the Baby Alpinist. And I kind of just give a side-by-side -side comparison on what you can kind of consider uh, when looking in the direction of these pieces. But I think these watches are just no brainers. This is going to be the one that has a more polarizing approach in terms of the dual crown design and the Cyclops with the date. A 200 meters of water resistance, wearable case at 39 and a half millimeters with a pretty compact lug to lug. It is going to be on the thicker end of things compared to some of the Hamilton offerings in this price range, given the automatic caliber and kind of bulbous nature of the case. But still, you can't go wrong with these. These are over manufactured, reliable. You also have the 6R35 movement on the inside, which in this case is one of the more entry doors into that movement family, as you'll find this in watches uh, north of $1,000 even. So nice to see in this instance. But to me, this one just felt the most appropriate to consider here when you're talking about a field watch in this range. And when I think of modern enthusiasts, what do they consider when they think of the Alpinist? This is probably the design DNA that probably first to come to mind. Moving along to our GMT category, this was probably the most difficult one because finding a mechanical GMT under $1,000 is going to be difficult. There were things that were in the price range of like $1,300 to $1,400. You have like the Mito Ocean Star GMT, which I want to uh, reference. You have the Sharp Edge GMTs from Seiko. But I think when you're talking about getting into a mechanical GMT caliber, Micro brands are actually a good place to look. They typically are solid at delivering packages around this $1,000 price range. Now, the first I wouldn't say is a micro brand because they have certainly expanded quite a bit in the last decade 
For here, we're looking at Christopher Ward with the C65 Trident GMT. Now, this follows kind of a format that's familiar. It's very vintage in terms of its approach, as we'll find with the second mention here as another one to look at from the GMT category. But this one with the handset, as well as some of the other elements of just the faux markers, I think come together to create a 1970s type of feel. And it's just the color and use of that orange GMT hand that I think pulls this all together. Pretty wearable case, all things considered. You have that thin outer bezel, which kind of gives more to the dial. Lug to lug is very reasonable for the size. Pretty reasonable price as well, $1,150. Now you might be experiencing some import duties and issues with actually getting these watches given the distribution of Christopher Ward being more direct to the consumer. So just keep that in mind. SW330 movement on the inside, so no nonsense. A GMT Swiss made caliber there and some nice water resistance to go along with it. And one other GMT to consider here, I would like the Baltic Aquascaf GMT. I just like the look of it. I just think that this is a very compelling looking watch. It might be safe. It's kind of going off some of that vintage Rolex DNA in a way with the bicolor bezel. But still, I think this is a well-designed watch. Baltic does a great job with these heritage design pieces. 39 millimeter case, lug to lug of 47 millimeters. So where's like those uh, pre-ceramic Daytona cases, which I think are amazing for versatility and wear, 100 meters of water resistance, and then utilizes an automatic Soprod C125. I've spoken about this movement in the past. Uh, I've been seeing it used by more manufacturers in this price range, even from brands like Zodiac that have their own, uh, within the Fossil Group, uh, production of movements and capabilities. So this seems to be getting some more adoption as a comparison to to some of the Eta and Salita calibers, but I really just like the look of uh, Baltic and what they're going for. And this was one of the watches that I think even furthered my just uh, focus and appreciation for what they were doing from a design perspective. So now for our next category, we have dress watches. And I personally find that dress watches, there's not necessarily like icons and dress watches for around $1,000, unfortunately. And I think dress watches in general, people aren't looking in the direction of them as much, which I think is, I think will come full circle. I think we'll come back to dress watches being popular again as the sports craze just kind of winds down. Now, before we get into my actual pick here, I decided to just have a couple honorable mentions that I want to uh, just include. One being the Seiko SPB 115. This is the enamel dial uh, member of the Presage family that I just, for around $1,000, it is really cool looking. This one has this chocolatey brown dial color that with the enamel, the handset, it just pops. And I love that just reflective glossy tone to that dial surface. Also, you have the Tissot Ballade, which has a COSC uh, chronometer certification under $1,000. You have Hamilton and the many jazz masters that you can look at, Mito with the Barncelli line. There's a lot to include here, but if I'm talking about a dress watch that is almost synonymous with the brand is like a definitive option, there's only really one that I can think of here in the dress category, and that is with the Jung Hans Max Bill. Now, people might not like the design of the Jung Hans Max Bill. It's kind of a love it or hate it type of thing. Some people say it's boring and what it's going for. You know that I'm a big fan of it, and I'm just a huge proponent of the design here. But it's just, I think, for a brand to have a dress watch as a leader, as their kind of almost mascot in a way, this is a watch that's achieved that for around $1,000. And if you do like the look of kind of this adaption from a wall clock design, the Bauhaus design elements embedded within the approach, the dome crystal, a variety of different dial colors to choose from, as well as variations of date, no date options, uh, numerals, no numerals, you have some optionality here. And if this is a watch that you like and you're looking for a dress watch, you have a thousand bucks to spend and it fits your lifestyle, this has to be one that you would consider here along with those other honorable mentions. But this would probably be my leading choice. And now for the most difficult category for me to decide on, and that was dive watches, just simply because there are so many to choose from. So I have three here. I also have some other honorable mentions that I certainly would consider here, but dive watches, and just in general, when you're talking about affordability, I have a video looking at this idea of you know, this should be your first watch type. And I look at the dive watches because it's usually over manufactured. There's a lot more you can do with uh, just the price segments. You're not relying on just overly elegant types of pieces. It's more of just down and dirty, getting the most specifications and thinking about the circumstance in which it's going to be used. And that I think offers a ton of versatility for a buyer. And here I have three options that I'm going to mention. 
First being the Doxa Sub 200. This is the more modern kind of mass appealing and entry door into the Doxa Sub family. You have the Doxa Sub 300s, which are gonna have more history, of course. These are going to be more wearable, a typical, probably mass appealing option. You still have the optionality when it comes to looking at the dial colors. I think the professional orange version is gonna be the most beloved, but a wide variety of the styles to go for. If you want something more conventional, they certainly have that as well. Getting a similar type of structure in regards to how they wear. 42 millimeters with the case size, but I would say wears closer to that of a 40 and a half to 41 millimeter case. Swiss movement on the inside and retail price just under $1,000. And when you're thinking of brands that certainly will have pedigree in the area of dive watches, you have to include Doxa in the conversation. Next up, we have the Mito Ocean Star 200. I'm just incredibly impressed with Mito and what they're delivering with the Ocean Star line. These to me, along with uh, some Certina divers, which I would say is like almost like the sister brand of Mito, it doesn't get as much love in the US market. Their distribution is kind of all over the map. Mito is a bit more solidified, not much more, but more solidified. And the Sub 200 is just a great looking watch, fantastic bracelet, does the job in terms of water resistance, 80 hour power reserve movement. Uh, you have a variety of different dial colors to choose from. You could look at the tribute model if you want something a little bit more wearable on the wrist. But these just feel like the modern creation of the Ocean Star collection. If you just kind of want that modern approach with your dive watch, nice specifications, uh, reasonably wearable, this is going to wear a little bit larger on the wrist. It's 42 and a half millimeters here, but with the lug to lug, you can get that down to around more of a 41 millimeter wearing experience. Thin on the wrist as well. That's another great thing going for these Mito watches, but just well-constructed, well-finished. Maybe some will say it's a bit just tame in terms of its design and maybe even safe and kind of boring. But when you're talking about thousand dollars, maybe one of the best built dive watches that you can find for the money, this has to be on a list. And as a couple other mentions here that I would consider, you could look at a variety of Seiko watches uh, and their dive watches. Probably the Sumo would be one that I would look in this price range as you have to pay a bit more money to get into it. All the Samurais, Turtles, if you're talking about, but that's more $500, I would say for prices. So I don't think those are maybe the most appropriate ones to consider here if you do have a bit more money to spend, unless you do wanna maybe get two watches for one and $1,000 is your price range. You could look at Tissot with the Sea Star. certainly could be another one to consider. Certina again, fantastic brand that have some great offerings that very similar to Mito in their production and finish for the money. You have Squale and then also Marathon as well, which probably is a bit more unconventional. Those two picks very similar to Doxa in regards to what they're going for with their design. But dive watches, a lot more on the table here for consideration. So it's hard to pick just definitive ones. Honestly, really just dive deep into this one, no pun intended, uh, to really pick out the best watch for you because there's a lot out there. And now for our final category, we have the quartz category. So what's the best quartz watch you can get for around $1,000? I think there are some cool quartz watches out there for just south of $1,000. You can look at the Mundane Stop to Go, which is one of those sleeper, interesting quartz watches that until you actually see it in action, the movement of that second minute hand, you then begin to start to have more appreciation for it. You can also look at the Hamilton PSR or known as the Pulsar in the past. Maybe one of the most iconic or important releases in all the 20th century in terms of watches. It did kind of mark a change in the industry and at the time was seen as this very premium luxury product. And it's just so cool looking if you do dig the history and design of the piece. But the one quartz watch I think makes the most sense to include here from a modern perspective, it's right at $1,000 as well, which is why I think it makes more sense. You're really maximizing your budget. That is the Longines VHP. So the very high precision. And it's going to be true to that name with accuracy standards of plus or minus five seconds per year. This is one of the most accurate quartz watches that you're going to find on the market regardless of price. And to find it for around $1,000 with the Conquest utility that comes with just the everyday wearing functionality that it has, I think makes this one more compelling if you are going for an everyday option. Case is going to be on the larger end in terms of wearability. Long jeans sometimes have these longer extended lug to lug lengths. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're looking at these watches. Sapphire crystal and the time setting with the crown is really cool. You have this kind of slowly drifting setting of the time and how they will kind of jump into position. Despite this being cool, some might say that this doesn't feel like a watch, more of a computer in a way, but I still think at the end of the day, if you like just the mechanical aspect of what is happening here and don't mind the course movement and just see the upside of accuracy for this category, this is when it makes a lot of sense. But all right, guys, that is my list looking at some of the definitive watches and how you can maximize your budget for $1,000 and watches to consider. 
What other watches would you say somebody should just look at in this price range? I thought that these were pretty good picks. The dive watch category was certainly tough because there's so many out there that you can consider for $1,000. I think that just goes to show how much value is there for just one takeaway for this video. That is probably a good place to maybe spend your money if you're looking for that, maybe as well as the everyday option as well. If you enjoyed this video and you want us to do more categories of these price ranges and things like that, please give it a thumbs up. That's a great indicator for us that you wanna see more of this down the road. And what's another price that you would like us to look at? Also check out teddybaldosar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the new products that we offer. And definitely check out our new pre-owned section, new models coming in every single week. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.